Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. I'm finally back after taking a short break. Now that we're in the brand new year, 2023, in January. Yeah, which I had to concentrate posting on all these commercial breaks. And I was also getting some more gifts and stuff um, after Christmas. You know, spending the New Year's Eve and day... You know, just uh, watching the countdown and just other movies and shows I was watching too. Not to mention, we had a horrible weather that was going around. Yeah. I mean, all, all this uh, rain that was happening, hard rain, uh, which leads to like mudslides and all that that's happening. And wind was getting in the way too. We could barely get out of the house because of that. But, but sometimes we do get out, you know, for a while to, you know, just to do some errands and all that stuff. And sometimes we even go out to do whatever we can. Uh, but nevertheless, um, I now got a new haircut, finally. And still looking sharp. And I'm actually wearing my marble t-shirt which is black panther wakanda forever as you may already know because i wore this since 2021 ever since i did the review of all these movies well actually it was the um the best and worst films of 2021 uh at the time you know because i was reviewing the list and i was just telling you all the stuff here and there yeah because the last video I did was the best and worst films of 2022. Yeah, there are a few things I did forgot to mention, but considering how long the video is, though, like I know KDOC is is a TCT network, which is a a religious network, replacing the the original programming that they had, which sucks that year. Yeah. After 30 years, I couldn't believe they really did something disrespectful for for a long independent station in the OC. Yeah, guaranteed to be the best. And uh, I know there's other a lot of events that were going around, and I know we lost a lot of celebrities that, that I already mentioned. Um, well, a few few of them I did mention. I mean, I did forgot to mention that we did lost Ray Liotta, we lost uh, Paul Savino, we lost um, James Caan, um, Olivia Newton-John we lost, um, also the director, Ivan Reitman, and I think we lost... Um, other people as well that again it's hard to list everyone because there's too many but I did wanted to mention a few of them for a change and then all then I think oh yeah and then there was the the war that was going around between the Ukraine and Russia and then other things that were happening too yeah, crazy. All right. <clears throat> but now that we're in 2023, I mean, yes, we did find out recently about um, actor Jeremy Renner who got into a snowplow accident. Terrible. But it, at least, um, hopefully, he'll be fully recovered from that accident because he did post a picture of him with glasses and he had a a minor uh, scar right there but I'm hoping he'll he'll survive this I mean I know there have been celebrities who got into horrible accidents too like Tracy Morgan and Will Ferrell come to mind and there were other actors who had got into it too but then they fully recovered from it I, mean, I know I it sucks having having to get injured from something this horrible. 
But he was also trying to warn everyone who was over there during the snow storm that was happening. I mean, yeah, because we also had a storm too during this massive rain that was happening. It was very cold too. That we had to put the heater on. Yeah. Okay. Now you probably now anyway, I, I was preparing to wear this shirt because I'm gonna be reviewing the brand new sequel that we've been waiting for for a while, which is called Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Yes. And this was the long awaited sequel and that's really hard because you know we did have our tragic loss of actor Chadwin Boseman who played King T'Challa aka Black Panther but due to a uh, colon cancer I mean that same disease that took uh, Charles M. Schultz away you know, Sparky it definitely took him away for sure um, they were going to plan on doing more sequels and I know he appeared in in the MCU you know with uh, Captain America Civil War and the Avengers all come to mind while having his own film I mean this was this was a lot of hard work for him that he did but he really portrayed him exactly what we expect and he will always be remembered by so they did their best not to recast him because of it I mean they weren't so sure which actor they were going to choose to replace him but I'm glad they didn't because although sometimes I don't mind if they get another actor to, to take his place because maybe they might continue to go on but I guess they decided because of that because of how iconic his role is I mean they just didn't want this to happen so they want him to be remembered by and they actually had to ridden his role off like that so we get to see half of him at the beginning and then next thing you know there's going to be the next story that's going to follow which this time it's going to be Princess Shuri to be taken over because as you may know she's uh, T'Challa's uh, sister very intelligent has a great personality uh, I loved her in the movie too and she's played by Letitia Wright yeah because she was just terrific in Black Panther the best fiend of them all so I figured she'll definitely be the skill to take the place and maybe the next to become as we speak if she if she has the power to create Black Panther as we know to come back to life but in a new except this time we get a female to play the role so nothing wrong with that and I'm happy with it so now we now the legend will continue to go on until maybe another person or perhaps well we learn the secrets behind it that there might be another one to follow let's see how that goes I mean if they thought of doing some more this is also going to be the final film in the phase four of MCU so chances are we're going to get into phase five and I think phase five will be much better yeah so anyway um, let's begin with the review it stars Letitia Wright Lapita Nongyo, Dana Garrar, Winston Duke, Florence Kasumba, Dominique Forn, uh, Michaela Cole, um, Tanosh uh, Huda Maja, Martin Freeman, Julia Louise Dreyfus, uh, Angela Bassett with some cameo appearances by Michael B. Jordan which we last saw him in the first movie um, Ish by uh, Ish D. Bancola Dorothy Steele, Danny Zapani 
with Trevor Noah, Mabel Kandana, Maria Mercedes Cora, and Lake Bell. It's written by Ryan Hoogler, along with Joe Robert Cole, and he also directed the movie. You have Ryan Coogler, of course, uh, did the movie Creed and the first Black Panther. And just to let you know, there's going to be spoilers in this review, so if you haven't seen the movie, uh, just go out and see it before you watch my review. I mean, even though it's been over two months now. So, here we go. The movie begins when the king of Wakanda, T'Challa, also known as Black Panther, played by Chadwin Boseman, is dying from a terminal illness, and so is the actor himself, who was dying from colon cancer, and he passed away, of course. Which his sister, a very talented, gifted, lots of intelligence, with great personality named Princess Shuri, who's played by Letitia Wright, had believed that he can't be cured by the heart-shaped herb, which synthetically recreates the herb that was being destroyed by Eric Killmonger, Stevens, also known as the Chadaka, played by Michael B. Jordan, but failed to do so just before uh, T'Challa's passing. So they had a funeral for the rest of the entire Wakandas since they've now lost their protector. But they'll still be able to remember T'Challa as indeed not only the king but also Black Panther. So a year later Wakanda is under pressure from other nations by sharing the Bribranium but other parties um, attempting to steal it. Queen Mamona, played by Angela Bassett, had employed Shuri to continue her research on finding the heart-shaped herb, hoping to create a brand new Black Panther to take his place. But she refused to do so due to her beliefs that Black Panther is a relic of the past. So meanwhile, in the Atlantic Ocean, the CIA and U.S. Navy SEALs underlies a vibranium detecting machine to locate the potential vibranium deposit underwater. But the expedition is being attacked by a group of blue-skinned, water-breathing superhumans that are led by Nalmar, who is played by um, Tanakh Herida Magia. Yes. And he's the guy, you know, where has the stick on his nose and you know, has the necklace on his ears and even has the wings on his heel so he can fly around. Uh, but the rest of them, they just have their breathing tubes and they even use a sonic landscape um, sound that they make that actually triggers uh, the rest of the CIA agents and FBI that somehow got under it that spell and they soon uh, jump out of the ship into the ocean and died so they didn't bring them back for sure so now what's all alone is is this one woman and and the one man who are already on the helicopter, but they all got killed after this one spin that got caught um, by Namor. So now, eventually, the CIA believes that Wakanda is to be responsible for what just happened. And I know they were about to you know, try to f go after the, the rest of the other teams who were stealing the rest of the vibranium. Anyway, No More confronts Ramona and Sherry, easily by bypassing Wakanda's advanced security, for sure, and blames them for the surface of the world's race to find vibranium. 
but gives them an ultimatum to deliver the scientists responsible for the vibranium detecting machine that they got, or he will attack Rakonda for sure. So then the Shuri and Okayi, who's played by Danai uh, Guerrero, who's the general of the Dora Malaji, he had the Rakonda's all female special forces, yeah, the ones that are all bald, they have tattoos, and they even have those spears. So they always prepare themselves for sure. Uh, anyway, they learned that the CIA agent Everett K. Ross, played by Martin Freeman, that the scientist in question is an MIT student named Rory Williams, played by Dominique Forn. So they arrive at the University of Cambridge to confront her, for sure, but they got to try to prepare themselves to be discreet. <laughs> so Sherry's going to be the one that's going to go straight to the dorm to find her and be able to explain, but unfortunately Okayi <laughs> just barged in and ends up trying to attack and ready to escape, but yeah, cause, but I know, um, Rory got scared. For sure. So they had to go straight to the garage because that's where she goes around using the vibranium to create all these uh, technology that, that she has at her lab. Yeah, this is where she, you know, builds, um, you know, auto repairs and other stuff. She has this beautiful car that's like muscle built, like it's from the 70s for sure. Um, but it's an awesome car. Hoping to get things working with the engine and, and other parts. Um, she had all the other secrets because she was about to create this one big suit. Kind of like what Iron Man had been created by <laughs> Tony Stark at, at his lab. And he has his uh, AI uh, assistant to join in. Yeah, Jarvis will soon be known as Vision. Yeah. So, <laughs> which it was really funny too, because um, the rest of the the groups of um, the FBI uh, came and barged in into the garage just when they're about to escape, and they said she has an art, she has an Iron Man suit. <laughs> so yeah, she so Rory escaped to join with um, Shuri and Okie, Okie. And yes, and they had this one um, escape that, during this chase scene going around, already being attacked by the cops and uh, the FBI, and then of course, No More's uh, warriors arriving on this on the scene and and was ready to uh, to grab uh, both Shuri and Williams underwater to meet No More. And straight all the way underwater is the, the kingdom of Tolokin, known as the capital city, which he had protected for centuries from the discovery by the world. But it was very bitter at the surface of the world for enslaving the Maya. So at that rate, he proposed an alliance with Rakanda against the rest of the world, but friends to destroy Rakanda if they refused. So anyway... Ramona eventually strips her of her title as the general of the Dora Malaji because Okayi have had failed to protect them, but seeks out Nakia, played by Lapita Nanyo, who has been living in Haiti since the blip, so it's been so long, but begins to find out about the, tr the loss of, of the brother... Of course, the king of Wakanda, T'Challa. So she didn't show up at the funeral. Anyway, Nakia eventually helps uh, Sherry and Williams escape, for sure. Just killed uh, one of the warriors around. And now, no more proposed an attack, or retaliate a flood attack straight to the city of Wakanda. Uh, with the rest of the Rakanas. And this is where it's going to have a big attack that's happening. Uh, also, um, 
Everett's uh, ex-wife, who's a CIA director, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, who's played by Julia Lewis Dreyfus, has began to find some secrets that he has been working with the Vakandas, exchanging classified intelligence for sure, which then got him arrested for. So after the funeral of Ramona, because yeah, she was about to protect uh, Williams from Nomar. It was like a huge flood attack. All these flood bombs and the the sonic uh, landscape uh, spell sound that triggers everyone's ears, uh, as I already mentioned already. Because he's responsible for killing Ramona just when she was about to save uh, Williams. And Sherry came, but it was too late. They did save uh, Williams, but they didn't save her. Because all that water really triggered uh, her entire body. Yeah, I mean, all yes, all that water can really affect you so much that you would drown. Yeah. So now Sherry is all alone with the rest of, of Wakanda's without an actual family, you know. Like, just like in the first movie, we lost the father, who was, of course, played by uh, Forrest Whitaker. We lost the mother, and now we lost her brother, ev everyone around. It's, it's, it sucks. So, Shuri used the remainings of the herb that gave uh, Nomar's people their sumer superhuman strength and abilities to reconstruct the heart-shaped herb. So she ingested it, all the creation, mixed it in together, but it definitely gained superhuman abilities and ones of meeting Killmonger at the industrial plane. Urges her to seek revenge, and that's where she eventually creates the brand new Black Panther suit. And accepted by the other Wakanda's tribe as the Black Panther, so now, the legend has finally returned. I mean, in spite of M'Baku's urge for peace. Yeah, and he's played by Winston Duke. Anyway, so now Shuri is determined to exact vengeance on Nomar for Ramona's death and orders the immediate counterattack of the member Aneka to join her. So Williams, of course, uh, uses the Iron Man. Uh, so yes, uh, Williams actually, as we already saw, as I mentioned, she creates the Iron Man-like suit, which is a power ectoskeleton to aid the rest of the Wakandas. And the, the Wakandans around. So yes, they're all going to be wearing all these special suits that, that's been created also by Shuri. So that way, they'll be able to use all these abilities, all this technology and everything that's built in, inside. So they'll be able to fly, they'll be able to control all of that, and be able to attack the rest of the other warriors around. Because they're already being prepared uh, by the ship, and they also have the invisibility and all that stuff too, so, you know, to fool them. <laughs> And they, they even um, they, they even come up with their own um, abilities too. Like they, they can go from one way to the other, hiding underwater. They brought in all these sea animals too. Like they have uh, the killer whale. They have uh, all these other whales too and other fishes around. But basically it's mostly whales. Because after all, they're mammals. Just like we are. So, and they brought in their own, the, their own particular spears and everything they have. All those weapons. So they can go around attacking all the Wakandas. The Wakandans, everyone. So that's where it has this bigger counter attack here and there. And there. But of course, no matter how who's going to win, it's going to be a big battle. 
And it also leads to a big battle between Sherry and Nomar, straight at the beach. And this is where it's the fight to the death, but then we begin to spare the life here right away that that they offer to make a deal. That if, you know, I'm going to save your life and I'm going to save the rest of them. But here's the deal. We're, we're going to try to find a way to share the vibranium and the superhuman abilities and all that stuff. If we can call out this war and also try to not have Wakanda get into bigger trouble and make sure they get protected the way everything should be so they can live in peace that goes the same with their world the, the Loken so they so now finally they won and now they're gonna get ready for their next adventure if this happens and hopefully they'll have a ritual that's for the entire family to be remembered by by actually burning this one the the one set of clothing. Yeah. So that way now they can finally be in peace for sure. And there will be followers coming around for sure. Yeah. And also, um, Ebert Ross had finally uh, got escaped with the help of Okiyi. Yeah, because he was getting arrested. So now they're going to be set right to it for the next attack or if there's going to be something going on for sure I mean even in in the MCU okay well I gotta say though it, this was really hard and it sure gets to you a lot because of the tragic loss of Chavin Bozeman and and all the rest that's happening but this is a terrific sequel and it's even better than ever for sure um, Letitia Wright, you got to give her credit. She's just incredible as Shuri. No matter what she does, she still has the, the abilities. She has everything she hoped for. I mean, she does all of her work, and she still has the personality that she remembers. But, but it seems like all of that was lost ever since um, her brother died. So she becomes more serious than ever. But it's always great that now she's going to be the next leader, for sure, as a princess to save uh, Wakanda and protect it from everything that's happening. Um, and also, Angela Bassett, uh, who just won um, a Golden Globe uh, just recently uh, for Best Supporting Actress for her performance as Queen Pomona, and rightfully deserved because she's just... A wonderful actress and I'm glad that you know she's still with us and she's doing everything she can for any performance she's done in her entire career because um, I always love that actress too and it's just sad about what happened I mean the character but that's but her character will be remembered too uh, and the rest of the cast is great uh, including the villain um, named Nomar, yeah, Tanusha, Huda, Maya, because he's the king of Tolokin, and he does for civilizations because he's also the son without love, as we referred to. But he's great in the role. I'm glad they didn't have a weak villain, so now we know where we're going for. And all these blue-skinned uh, warriors, as we speak. I mean, yes, this was this was the common tribe at the time from many nations and many uh, centuries that follows. I mean, this is they had the very powerful. This is a very powerful group who who they can become more superhuman than ever before. I mean, when they had this power to become blue-skinned, but there are times when even the while they're underwater, the the blue skin eventually wears off. You know all that makeup, so you begin to see some clear in a little bit of uh, those scenes here and there. So yeah, 
So that, that kind of felt uh, pretty odd. Um, well, okay. There are some issues here and there. Like, I thought uh, Julie Lewis Dreyfus as Valentina is just your typical, um, your typical woman who just who has this uh, this ultraviolet uh, highlights on her hair. I mean, she's always getting into uh, Everett's nuts. Like, she knows that she wants to destroy him, for sure, because of all the secrets behind her. I mean, she's just, ugh, typical. Um, I mean, I love Julia Lewis-Dreyfus, of course. I mean, she'll always be a lane to me <laughs> for the TV show Seinfeld. But for the new director of the CIA, I mean, she's just, I don't know. I mean, you either wanted to like her or hate her, but I guess that's the case. Um, but nevertheless, and the scenes with, um, Killmonger, I know, like, I didn't expect to see that coming, but boy, having to see that just bothers me. I mean, I know Michael B. Jordan's a great actor, but I just didn't like him as Killmonger. I never did either. I mean, e even when I saw the first Black Panther, I always thought he was just particularly a weak villain, very lousy, he's trying to be like a badass kind, but he's just, um, he's just a jerk, he really is, and a, co and a complete asshole, never liked that character, especially what he did to um, his father, he even calls him a hypocrite too, what an ass, I'm glad that guy died. That character is, is an asshole so much. Anyway. But at least this time, you know, they spare the villain's life and everything. Uh, the special effects, of course, are spectacular, as we, as we know. And I definitely love the Iron Man-like suit that uh, Williams had, too. I thought that was very creative. And the other suit, too. And, and all these other funny moments here and there. That you'll never forget. <laughs> and I just love the characters too. But I mean Ryan, Ryan Coogler just does a great job no matter what he does. I mean he you know he did an excellent job with the first Black Panther, so I'm glad he continued to go for this reign. Because you know, we want Black Panther to be remembered by and they definitely Paid a lot of respect for him too. You know, they gave him a tribute. They even had a tribute of him on the Marvel Studios logo. This is how you do it. I mean, yeah, because Marvel Studios have always created their own specific logo that they chose for the rest of, of the characters to be known by. Yeah, that's what we need. Yeah. I mean, having to live in this world where everyone's getting tired of superheroes and all that stuff. I mean, which I know I, I can't stand because I always love superhero movies and I love comic book movies and because technically it's comic book anyway I mean villains too I love the villains who are powerful for sure not your typical weaker ones that we often get but the best of all you know they are indeed the biggest blockbuster money maker films that they ever come up with no matter what story they choose but they always tend to get stronger and stronger sometimes they get weaker depending on how it goes I mean I'm glad to hear the film eventually grows over 832 million worldwide I mean this was a big um, expense for this movie uh, after the big expense for all the other films that came out in the summer I mean, even with the other uh, two Marvel films like um, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and Thor Love and Thunder, yeah, which I've yet to review those two films. Uh, I hope I can get the, the 4Ks uh, later on too. I mean, I, I didn't get it during Black Friday, but maybe I might get it on my birthday or something. I don't know. We'll see. 
or maybe later, like maybe later in January or February, or March or whatever. I don't know. I guess depending on how much uh, busy I get in the world here. But nevertheless, but this movie, this is perfect, and you should check it out for sure. Okay, if if, if you have a lot a lot of sense here, because I am tired of all this wokeism and all this utter crap going around. Just see the film and just have fun, okay? No more of this this garbage, okay? We wanted to keep us steady and still for sure. And hoping that we'll have a better future. Lie heads of them. And DC will have better movies too. Let's hope so. Because that year, you know, I, I didn't care for the two movies. I, have, I still have yet to see Legends of the Super Pets though, which I think is a much better movie than the Batman and and Black Adam, yeah, because they were, I'm sorry, they just didn't work for me, but I'm, I, but let's not get into this Marvel DC debate, because we don't want this to become a problem, okay, I love DC, I love Marvel, I love comic book movies, I love movies in general, of any genre, no more of this garbage, okay, no more of this, okay, we get a lot of bad films every now and then, every year, every century, okay? No matter how they improve, no matter how they get praised, no matter how how they they skewered or destroy them or anything that they do. But all the critics and the audience in the world, I mean, movies are always going to be remembered by, for sure, you know, cinema. We want cinema to survive, okay? Even if even in this post-pandemic world that we're in. Okay. And I know, because I've been saying this many times already, already. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> and I'm repeating myself. Okay, so that's Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And I give the movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And Wakanda Forever. Bye.